everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. We are really excited today. We have the producer and creator of Drop Dead Diva here. Josh Berman is here. And Josh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, Rachel. It's great to be here. It's great talking about Drop Dead Diva again. Yeah, I love this show. It's one of my all-time favorite shows. I think that Jane Bingham is such a fantastic character. So I'm really excited to dive into this with you and talk about how this whole thing happened. Amazing. It's it's definitely <laughs> been the pride of my career and getting that kind of feedback makes me even more thrilled that Hallmark Movies and Mysteries is airing the yeah. show again. It's it's as you know, it's on now. It's crazy. It's on twice a day. It's on at five and six p.m. every day, Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And then being here today, we're also talking about Marathon Monday, which is yeah. January 16th, Martin Luther King Day. It is the longest drafted diva marathon in the history of the show. We have the first 10 episodes airing starting at 9 a.m. So it's an all day drop dead diva marathon. And are they going to have the pilot? Because when, yes. they, when they started it, some people didn't get the pilot. Some There was some yeah. kind of problem. There was a coding glitch uh, oh, okay. and Hallmark did not air the original pilot last uh, on uh, when it started airing on Hallmark. So they are making up for it and they absolutely oh, will be airing uh, at 9 a.m. as the pilot. So it's, mm -hmm. I know so many of our actors and big fans are gonna make it an event and watch it together. So if you're, if you happen to be watching on Marathon Monday, please tweet most likely and, and you know, use the hashtag drop dead diva. And I won't be surprised. I'll be watching with everybody else. Hopefully people will respond and, you know, mm -hmm. tell me what you like and don't like about the show and who your favorite guest stars are. I know in the first batch of 10, we've got some really fun guest stars, including Rosie O'Donnell, who was our first huge guest guest star. Yeah. We're going to talk about that too. And there may be some spoilers. We're going to dive deep. So if y'all don't want any spoilers about Drop to Diva, then maybe Wait and watch the, watch the show. And listen to the podcast on Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go back. How did you get started in television? You had done CSI and Bones before this, right? Yeah, yeah. So I, um, the first show I was on, I was a baby writer on CSI. I was there six years. By the time I left, I was an executive producer. I'd written, I think, close to 50 episodes of CSI. I loved it. Um, and then I worked on Bones. I was brought on to Bones for it was supposed to be six weeks. I stayed four years. I loved it. I loved Hart Hansen, who was the showrunner. Uh, he was an amazing, he is an amazing friend still to this day. Um, and, but I always had this idea about Drop Dead Diva, um, inspired truly by my grandmother, whose name was Deb in real life. And she was a plus sized, four foot 11 Jewish grandmother who carried herself like a supermodel. And I always nice. thought, how can I write a show about a woman? And she suffered a lot of tragedy. Her entire family was killed in the Holocaust in, Euro in Europe. She was the only survivor and she came uh -huh. to America and nothing could stop her. And she really taught me at a young age to let nothing stop me. So when I finally had built up the cred in Hollywood, having worked for 10 years on other people's shows, then, you know, at that point I was asked, what do I want to write? And I said, mm -hmm. I have a show about a, I couldn't exactly write about a Jewish grandmother, but I have a show that captivate captures the spirit of my grandmother. And that was the birth of Drop Dead Diva. But how did you get that first writing gig on CSI? Like, how did you, did you go to film school? How did no, you get that? No, um, I had, so early in my career, I very early in my career, I was a career. I was a junior executive at NBC. And uh -huh. while I was there, I started writing scripts on the side. And then um, I'd written a spec, I wrote a 10 minute short film called Alan McBeal, which was a spoof of Ally McBeal. And I shot it on the set of Profiler. I had raised $10,000 to, to shoot this and it ended up going viral. It was before the time of you know Facebook and all that, but it went viral literally on Entertainment Tonight and I no uh, got way. a copy of it and they interviewed me. And at that point, kind of my, my writing career was born. Did uh, you grow up in LA? I grew up in LA, but very outside the business. My, okay. uh, my no one in my family is associated with the business. So I kind of felt like I had to push my way in mm -hmm. like anyone else. Yeah. And uh, you, did you just, how'd you get that initial job at NBC? 
Uh, it's that's actually a fun story. I was uh, I was in law school at Stanford, and I had uh -huh. and I wanted to intern, and I was very interested in research, and I had sent an email to the head of research at NBC. Sorry, a letter. We didn't have mm -hmm. email back then. And he hired me as a intern for the summer. And while I was there, I did some ratings analysis uh, and how I, how to predict ratings, which got the attention of Warren Littlefield, who was the president. And Warren called me into his office and said, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to be a creative executive. And uh, he said, okay, I'll hire That's you next summer as an associate. So I got to be a summer associate and that was my entrance into this business. That is so cool. So you just said right up, this is what I want. Yes. Is, and you, you didn't have any qualms about that. That's it great. Was scary. It was scary yeah. because obviously sure. I was being trained to be a lawyer. That's a very set career path. And I, and I, you know, obviously the greatest thing I ever did, I'm glad I finished law school because it helped me write all those episodes of Drop Dead Diva. Yeah. I was wondering about that because both of Bones and CSI are both procedurals. Uh, yeah. And so then Drop the Diva is a courtroom drama, courtroom comedy, whatever you want to call it, yeah, dramedy. Sure. And, uh, and so, yeah, so that must have helped you that you had been to law school. A thousand percent. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so much of my writing on Drop Dead Diva too. I mean, I, I often wrote the court there were, I mean, sorry, on CSI, there were some courtroom episodes. I, I either wrote or co-wrote a lot of those, uh -huh. even the, the forensics, the, the criminal justice aspect of CSI, I was very right for coming out of law school. Uh huh. Did you finish law school? I did. I finished yeah. law school. I passed the bar, but passed the um, bar. Oh I my never gosh. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. That was deal with my parents. If I didn't pass the bar, I owed them a lot of money for law school. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is really, really interesting. So how did you get this? So you have your grandmother, this kind yeah. of inspiration, uh, but, uh, how were you able to like sell the network on this show with like a non-proven star, this kind of crazy idea? Like, it seems like it, it, it was a miracle that it all came together. It was a miracle. And, uh, when I first pitched it to one of my agents at the time, he literally said, well, you're the dark procedural guy. Why do you want to write that? And yeah, I said, because I don't want to be pegged as anything. I don't believe uh -huh. it being put in a box. And this, this is what I'm passionate about writing. You know, I've never seen a show with a plus sized woman at the lead and as a lead. And I thought yeah. it was about time, you know, having kind of being the skinny white boy in Hollywood too. You, it's yeah. all about body image. And if you don't fit a certain type, you don't get cast. And that always yeah. bothered me. Like, you don't look around the world and see what Hollywood looked like. You, you, you know, and I wanted to write something different. We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode, and that is the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. The only other example I can think of, it would be Roseanne, which is like a totally wow. different kind of character than uh, Jane. You're, you're, you're right. That that's more of a traditional half hour too. Mm -hmm. So where the, I, I should have said there hadn't been a, a, a one hour show. Yeah. With a plus sized woman as the lead. Well, and it just meant a lot to me to, to have this show where you have a character uh, who's, I, I even don't even love the plus size, uh, thing, but whatever plus size woman who had the spirit of a supermodel in her. That was so fun. I, I, I will always just love that character. It's kind of who Brooke is in real life too. Like, mm -hmm. she's so she's beautiful inside and out oh, yeah. working with her. And it's like, come on people like see her for who she is see see jane for who she is you know and so it was yeah. really really fun 
to give voice to a character that hadn't had one before this show. Yeah. And, and now she's in Sweet Magnolias and, and that character's also like super confident. Oh yeah. There's never. And so I, I think it's really a special thing that she brings. And she told us that she had never like even auditioned for a, for a role like this. Uh, and uh, that she was just doing it to practice for her classes. She was taking She's classes. so modest. She's so modest. It's true. <laughs> she came out to LA and it took a while for, uh, I, I would say to, even though her audition was an A++, it was tough. And, and Sony, to their credit, instantly signed on. But uh-huh. Lifetime was nervous. And yeah, I mean, I, it would make sense to be nervous, to have yeah. somebody who's going to be number one in the call, on the call sheet, number leading the show, who'd never done, I don't even know if she'd ever done episode television before. Uh, she was in one episode of, I think, Law and Order. And it was, she yeah. was, I think her character was like woman on the bench, yeah. like <laughs> not even a, a name. Um, so yeah, it was new for her, but she was so, I mean, she was so lovely. I'll never forget in the pilot, it was the scene where she wakes up in the hospital bed after uh-huh. getting hit by a car. And it was taking a while to film the scene. And she called me over and she's like, I'm so sorry, but I need to ask you a favor. I'm like, of course. What, what do you need, Brooke? She's like, I just need to go to the bathroom. I'm like, <laughs> like she was so kind. She didn't want to interrupt anything. Everybody else, when she's the star of the show, just to go to the bathroom. It was so yeah. cute. Well, and it's such kismet that both Deb and Jane would both be played by Brooks. Yeah, isn't that hilarious? Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of a lot of irony in this show. Uh huh. <laughs> Which even goes to the nail polish, the ironic taffy. Yeah. So when she did the first audition in New York, like what was it about her that really stood out? Um, she glowed from the inside out. Yeah. You know, so natural. She felt like she was the character, like the character I had created in my head. Mm-hmm. You just, and we auditioned so many women for that part. And it was, we were like losing hope. And then I yeah. saw her tape and I'm like, oh, this is her. Like this, mm-hmm. this is who we've been looking for. Yeah. Was it hard in the writing of the episodes to get that balance between Jane and Deb in the character? Uh, no, because I always wrote her as if she was Deb, mm-hmm. you know, because she was Deb in Jane's body. Mm-hmm. And there were times where I would mess up and Brooke would call me. We talk in the beginning, you know, almost every day for the first couple of seasons. She'd be like, this line sounds more like Jane than Deb. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Thank you for catching me. Mm-hmm. So it, it was it's it was a great partnership kind of in involving that character. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's one thing we were talking about the pilot and they do kind of have to, they have to make Deb an O for O when she gets to heaven. But in reality, she definitely would be more on the good side, but you have to do it that way to give her a reason that she hits return. I think she was on the good side, but she wasn't tapped into that. I think it was easy for her. Like, I think she's the kind of woman who, if she walks by a homeless man, she's not going to give him a dollar, but she's not going to kick him. She'll just walk mm-hmm. by, you yeah. know? And I feel like she just, she had walked through life oblivious of other people's suffering and just very, very self-centered. She was beautiful mm-hmm. and she got attention for that. And I think as Jane, she woke up and realized she that there is another side of her and she was yeah. a good person, but, it, but she had never, she had never lived the life of a good person while she had, was alive as Deb. Mm-hmm. So you had Jackson as uh, Grayson and he hadn't yeah. done much either before this. I um, mean, yeah. a few little things, but how did you decide on him for Grayson? Um, you know, he had, he had done a movie for a lifetime and somebody, probably his agent or manager sent me that movie and said, just watch a couple scenes. And I, I fell in love with him in those scenes. He was just so charming. And even though he's so handsome, he was very accessible and likable. And uh, mm-hmm. he pretty much, he also got the role very quickly. He, he was he was kind of a no-brainer. As soon as Lifetime saw him, they signed off. Mm-hmm. Did you do like a chemistry test between, between uh, him and the Brooks? You know, I think we did, but I don't remember for sure. I, I mm-hmm. can't imagine we didn't, but I don't remember. 
Today's episode of the podcast is sponsored by W Rated, the podcast where we willingly watch the world's worst rated movies. Join me, Daisy. And me, Claire, as we break down the IMDb Bottom 100, choosing a different film from the list every episode. We take a deep dive into the plot, production, release and reviews, usually with a special guest to uncover if these films are truly as bad as everyone says they are. You can find us on Spotify, Apple, Good Pods and anywhere else you find your podcasts. So later on in the show, you have Team Owen and Team Grayson. Yes. And did you ever seriously consider ending with Owen? Or was it always Grayson from the beginning? I think in, I never told the rest of the writers where we were going because I had to make it believable mm-hmm. that she could fall in love with Owen. But- Because um, they had good chemistry. Such good chemistry. Yeah. He was, re- he was originally written as a 29-year-old surfer type. Oh, and really? When Lex Medlin came in, he ad libbed a couple of lines, and I fell in love with Lex as Owen. And so, and that's Carol Kritzer, our casting director, wanted me to see him for that exact reason. So, that kind of, and then, and then I needed everyone to believe that she was leaving Jackson Grayson, um, mm-hmm. played by Jackson Hurst, leaving him behind for Owen. But in my mind, I knew I always wanted to bring them back together. Yeah. Well, yeah. And then you have, him end up with Stacy. Oh, so that was probably the most controversial decision yes. of the show. And it was really hard. I called April Bowlby, who plays Stacy, and Brooke Elliott, um, who plays Jane. And we talked about it at length. And they were both worried that that everyone would hate Stacy. So mm-hmm. it became up to me, really, and I promised them that I'll do this in a way that gives all the characters respect and Mm -hmm. I think at the end of the day the irony is people then started rooting for Stacy and Owen Mm -hmm. um and it started with you know Stacy wanting to have his babies and then once she's pregnant with his kids I knew that it was natural to root for them as a couple Mm -hmm. so that was always my plan yeah yeah well I mean it's interesting because she like the, for the ending, and again, we said spoiler alert, but the ending to have her end up with Grayson, but to have it not be Grayson, to have it be Ian, was very brilliant because then you're you're ending them both on the same situation. My goal was always if I if I could get the ending I wanted, I wanted them to fall in love, but both be in different bodies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was definitely very. It was risky. I love that you said that. It was very risky. It was, you know, I I wanted to keep Jack. I, uh, the actor who plays Jackson still appeared in the finale, and that was really important to me mm-hmm. because the essence of both of them were there. Um, yeah. I don't remember if we were ultimately got Brooke Dorsey back. I don't. I think she may have. I, I wanted her there. I think we had to use old footage because we. Yeah, I think it's just there. clips. There was. We just yeah. didn't have. She wasn't available to shoot if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. but, um, but it, interestingly enough, even with Ian and, you know, we, we picked an actor who was so different in some ways than Jackson, but once you knew that he was Grayson, you still were rooting for them again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you have two cases per episode for yes. most episodes. And uh, so how did you decide kind of who was going to be on each case and what you were going to do and how that was going to work into the stories? How did you work with the writers for that? So I have, I had like a binder of thousands of cases left over from when I was in law school. And I literally Uh was in classes going, this would be a cool story to tell one day. (laughs) So I approach cases thematically. So if I knew an actor was dealing with a certain problem in their personal life, I would want them on a case that thematically uh, resonated with them. Oh, so, that's fun. Yeah, that that's often, and often it's very, very subtle. It's just a line or two. Uh-huh. Um, obviously, if there's cases about love or longing or grief, those naturally went to Jane. Um, and then uh, when like Kate, uh, Kate Levering, who plays Kim Caswell, yeah. When she was dealing with pregnancy and motherhood and single motherhood, I looked for cases in that arena. So I was always looking for cases that fit into their personal journeys. Oh, that's interesting. I was going to ask about Kim Caswell. So was that a tough part to cast? Because you need her to be an antagonist, but she can't be like too unlikable. Yeah, it was our last role that was actually cast. That's very smart of you. Um, 
And uh, I really liked Kate Levering. And when we originally started casting, she wasn't available. And then at the last minute, she became available and we hired her. And she it's funny because she plays such a nasty character. But in real life, she's one of the most charming, sweet people you've ever yeah. met. Well, she is she is an antagonist, but I I think there's enough kind of warmth because you have to like you have to like her at least a little bit because she dates Grayson at points. She she's, you know, there at the office with uh with Jane. Like she can't be too much. Yeah, the first season though, she's pretty, she does some pretty nasty. She, things. she is. So I, <laughs> well, and I, she gets that uh that Me Too episode where she gets yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where it wasn't really me too, but um, yeah, the scam, which was based on when I was I I worked at a law firm over a summer when I was in law school, and that particular case was based on a case that the firm worked on. Oh, the, really? Yeah, where a client was. Well, I don't. I shouldn't go into any details, but it's a fun case where yeah. where you know, sexy cake in, eating, <laughs> sexy cake eating. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's um, it's a fun, it's a fun. <laughs> So you had a lot of great guest stars and even in the first season, you had Rosie O'Donnell, Paul Abdul, Liza Minnelli, Delta Burke. Like, how were you able to get these big name people on a new show like that on Lifetime? Uh, What's even more amazing is none of them charged us much, much money. We paid basically the same we would pay for any actor because we didn't have a big Mm -hmm. budget. The show had a reputation right off the top as a feel good show that was female empowering and I think Mm -hmm. that helped us get these amazing iconic actors who wanted to be a part of that at a time when so many shows on tv were murder shows and death and law and orders and procedurals they wanted to do a show where they could just feel good about themselves about being a woman about you know about that that embraced all body types and so we were able to get these incredible guest stars I mean I scratch my head now how, I mean, even getting Kim Kardashian later on, who, despite her online persona, could not have been nicer or sweeter on the set to the point where she's like, don't put me in a fancy hotel. I just want to be near the set so I can be there early. Like, that's how easy she was to work with and took notes well and was gracious and kind to everyone. And just like that show bred kindness. If someone was not kind, they quickly didn't fit on the show. Yeah. And even like, getting Serena Williams and Brandy and even Tim Gunn, like all these people are so wonderful and kind and just, you know, yeah. and I think also when guest stars came, they'd go back to their agents and they'd say they had such a great experience. And then those agents would reach out to us on behalf of other big names. So it kind of was self-repeating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it must've been surreal to have Delta Burke and Liza Minnelli on one episode. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I think if I remember it right, Paula was in that episode and Gina Torres, who I loved, like it was, that was a big episode. And Nia Verdalis. That's a great episode. Yeah. Nia was terrific. Nia was terrific. Yeah. That was a really good episode. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Elliot Gold, you had Kathy and Jimmy. I mean, the list goes on and on. Kelly Osborne, Clay Aiken, Lance Bass, Wanda Sykes. <laughs> yeah. Like we were all over the place. Like we just mm-hmm. were very, very lucky. Yeah. And I think it's really cool that you were able to use, take advantage of Brooks Broadway yes. chops to have her singing throughout the season. Plus just putting on these kind of musical fantasy sequences were so much fun. Yeah. People forget that we were actually on the air before Glee. And we mm-hmm. did these musical numbers. And then obviously Glee got known as the drama that had musical numbers. But sure. I'm really proud that we had the our very early on before it was something that was done very, very commonly on a drama to have these mm-hmm. musical sequences. And that obviously wasn't part of my initial uh, vision for the show. But once I heard Brooke's voice, I'm like, oh, I need you singing. You're incredible. Yeah. Well, and you were able to get so many Broadway stars too. Yes. On the show. Someone like Faith Prince and... And, uh, and others. And so that was really fun too. Yes. As a, as a sh- I'm a huge show tunes fan. So it's always fun to see people like Faith that. Prince is amazing and yeah, up for anything. She is one of the moms and Sharon Lawrence as yes. you know, Faith, Faith Prince is Jane's mom. Sharon Lawrence is another, just such a pro who would, was so came to, to play and was so prepared. I just loved working with her. Yeah. And she even tweeted the other day when, when the, uh, when it was announced 
that it was going to be on Hallmark movie. She was, she was tweeting on uh, that, how much she enjoyed doing the show. Uh, yeah. She's really part of the family. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you end up with April Balby as Stacy? Uh, so April uh, came into audition towards the end of the process. And we were looking for somebody for, I was looking for somebody who, who could play the dits, but in my head, I knew that I wanted to evolve her and give her her own agency and intelligence. Mm-hmm. And when she came in as a human, she kind of em- embraced that. Like I could in just in more in talking to her than her actual audition. I'm like, you are really smart and you're so used to having to play really dumb because she was the dumb blonde on every single yeah. one. And I'm like, you're exactly the kind of character that I want to evolve in the show. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because she did. Because even in the first season, she is is worried about uh if she can make the uh, transition from model to to actor yeah yeah it was it was funny uh, it was yeah. fun writing those parts for her and then ultimately she becomes a businesswoman a successful mm-hmm. one so yeah that was that evolution was fun mm-hmm. we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast it's the hallmarkies merch store are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or hallmarky in your life What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Yeah, and so you had Ben Feldman as as uh, as Fred. Yes. And so that must have, did he go on to do a different show? Is that why you had to get rid of him in yeah, the first season? yeah. Um, we did not have him as a series regular uh, early on. We had him as recurring. That was okay. my choice. I wanted him as a series regular. Um, and he got offered a, a, a regular role on Mad Men. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, um, it's hard to turn that role down. But yeah. he's such part of the family. And every time he was his show was down, he would come do episodes for us, which is why he went back and forth so often. And mm-hmm. I told him I'd write him in anytime he wanted. I loved working with him so much. Um, the cast would accuse me would accuse me of him being my favorite. But I and there's probably some truth in the sense <laughs> that I loved writing for him. There's a lot of me in Fred, um, yeah. dorky kind of guy who believes in love and um, you know wants to make people happy and please people like so I enjoyed writing that character so so much and I liked him as a human being so much he's so charming he is I love yeah. him yeah yeah I mean all the the casting was just so great in this and I think that that went a long way because it is a it's a wild premise and you just kind of have to accept it and then have fun with it and uh, and but I think that all the casting really helped make it work. Yeah, we um, Susan Ellen was our casting director in the pilot. She was amazing. And then Carol Kritzer in series, who's one of my closest friends and is just brilliant with who she can bring in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so then you mentioned uh, Kim Kardashian coming in with the whole Pake plot line. Yes. Now, originally, she was just going to be in for one episode, right? That's right. She was only supposed to be for one episode. And you know, you don't know. She's got such a, a, a she's such a persona on her show and in the media. Sure. You don't so you're 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 a little nervous before you meet her. And then once I met her, she 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 came to me and she said, I love this bakery idea. I should can I open one? I'm like, sure. <laughs> like she was just she like she was so she is so big and larger than life. And she like she if people ask for her autograph, she stayed late, she showed up early, she was easy with wardrobe. She just, there was nothing that I felt like she wouldn't do. Like I felt like she was, it made me understand why she had become so famous because she's really dedicated to whatever's in front of her. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I this show is so about like, you know, challenging expectations. So when someone like Kim Kardashian, who I had all my own, pre, you know, preconceived notions of her, 
comes in and is so kind and so delightful. I, I was just thrilled. And that's mm -hmm. when we said, hey, would you like to come back? And she said, absolutely. And I think she was back for four, four maybe five episodes. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So because of the way that it ended, do you think that they could ever do a reunion movie? Uh, because yes, it would be Jane I, and Ian? I have the plot in my head. Ah. And I, I actually, if it ever came back, there's a way to, I, I, Will it be Jane and Ian? I think even I have a twist there that would be very unexpected. So I'm wait. I, I'm waiting for someone to call me and say I want that reunion movie because I'm ready to write it. Oh, please! I gotta. I'll I'll email Amy Winter at Lifetime. <laughs> please do. Please do. Yes. Yeah, let's start it. What could be the hashtag? <laughs> I'd love to do a Drop Dead Diva Christmas reunion movie. Oh my gosh! I would die. <laughs> I would die. Great, great. I mean, I feel like everybody would watch that. I do. I think it would be so huge for them. Yes. So that would be great. Yeah, it. It, it, that would be so fun. I hope that happens. Thank you. <laughs> we'll spread the yeah. word. Yeah. I mean, I just, I, I love the show because it was a body positive show without like, with just being what it is. It didn't have to say like, we're body positive. It was just, these are the oh, characters. Yeah. I, I had no interest in just like writing from a soapbox. I just wanted it to be a show and that you're absolutely right. It, it just, it's a feel good show. We very rarely, there's only one episode where the, the case and well, two episodes where the case involved body imaging. One was the, se the second episode of the whole series where mm -hmm. you had a waitress who was fired for being overweight, yes. but then also um, we had an episode Kathy. there. What's that? With the Kathy and Jimmy episode with dieting. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So there, there were ones that, that were organic, but you know, I don't, I didn't up front. I, I was very, I was with lifetime asked me early on. They're like, well, how are you going to do stories about weight each week? And I'm like, that's never my intention. My intention yeah. is to do stories about the human condition every week. And they're like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, I really appreciate that. It's just, I don't think there's been a character like Jane ever, uh, even since or before. Uh, on television oh it's, it's a shame it's a shame there should be more characters mm -hmm. like her there's not a lot of actresses out there like her mm -hmm. uh, just because there's not a lot of parts so yeah. it's all fulfilling prophecy prophecy there but you know i'm ready i'm ready to write more and i think yes. there should be more shows like this mm -hmm. yeah well we like to end our interviews with some fun silly questions okay. so ready okay first question what is the best ice cream flavor oh mint chocolate chip Okay. What is your favorite color? I like the whole rainbow. Okay. <laughs> uh, what music are you into right now? Wow. Um, right now, I just, I love listening to soundtracks as I write. So whatever movie soundtrack is on, I'm, I'm. In. Yeah. I like that too. All right. What is your go-to date night food? Pizza. Okay. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what is your go-to date night activity for going out and doing something? Gosh, you know, um, I think after COVID, I'm just happy going out. So <laughs> I would say dinner. Uh, I would just say dinner somewhere nice with long conversations with yeah. people. Seen it's while. true. I just getting out of the house yes. is great. <laughs> I, <laughs> These I yeah. All right. Which do you like better, dogs or cats? Dogs. I have a wonderful dog named Luna. Mm -hmm. He was a rescue during Aww. COVID. That's and you can, name. you can actually follow her on Instagram at <laughs> Lucky Luna Tuna. And she, she's got new posts all the time. <laughs> oh, that's cute. That's cute. All right. Which do you like better, beaches or mountains? Wow. I would have to say beaches. I could listen to surf all day long. Yeah. Same with me. Mm -hmm. All right. What's your favorite holiday to celebrate? Wow. Um, Valentine's Day, because I'm a romantic. Aww. That's cute. That's cute. Okay. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Wow. Um, I don't think I have a favorite. Um, I, I, um, Legally Blonde. Oh gosh. That's a great one. You know, <laughs> Legally Blonde. That, thank you for, yes. Obviously there's, there's a lot of inspiration from Legally Blonde. Yeah. So um, I love that as a, that should be my favorite movie. Thank you. It, especially the episode with Brooke Burns. Mm -hmm. I felt like, you know, cause she's like being yeah. investigated for murdering her husband and, uh, she's this fitness yeah, person. No, it, it's very similar. Yeah. 
uh, plot wise mm-hmm. and, and what, what turns the murder case. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, very good. You answered all the questions. This was such oh, a good. fun interview for me. Cause I really do love the show. I think it is such an empowering, sweet, funny, wonderful show. Well, so. Rachel, it was uh, having fans like you is what's what is what brought this show back. And, you know, we have Facebook groups and Twitter groups, and I'm so grateful to the fans and, I hope everyone will keep watching on, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, Monday through Friday, five o'clock on Hallmark, but also this coming Monday, mm-hmm. January 16th, Martin Luther King Day. We've never had 10 episodes air in a row, the first 10 episodes. And I'm excited if you've never seen the show, it's a great time to start watching and watch along with the fans and tweet about it and hashtag drop dead diva so I can comment. And yes, uh, and we had, it. we have our first, we have our recap of the first season already out. And we'll have the second season uh, th- that week. And then we'll take a week off for Sundance because I'm too busy to watch a season of TV sure. that week. Uh, and then we'll keep going and we'll recap the whole series. So it'll be super fun. Me and Jasmine, my co-host. So Amazing. Well, thank you guys for your support and your interest. And thank you to the fans. And if people want to follow you on social media, what's the best way? Uh, they can follow me on Instagram or Twitter, and it's Berman Josh, B E R M A N J O S H. And uh, I, yeah, Instagram or Twitter, find me there. And mm-hmm. uh, you can follow Luna there too, my dog. Yeah. And <laughs> then, like I said, we did interview Brooke Elliott this last um, November. So that was really fun. And then we've also interviewed Zach Hug, who is a writer on the show. So I love that you have both our amazing people and I hope you'll interview more of our actors in the near future. Yes, we want to. We're, 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 we are ready. I'll so. set it up, Rachel. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, everyone. We'd like to thank Josh for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun for me to get to talk to him and find out the backstory for one of my favorite shows. And we'd love your thoughts in the comment section or on Twitter. And make sure you're following us all over social media, Homeworkies Pod, Homeworkies Podcast. We're back on Facebook finally after being disabled for two months. So yay. Uh, and you can follow me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. So check that out. Also make sure to give your five-star ratings and reviews on iTunes for the show. That really helps us a lot and people to be able to find us. And then uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have the patron group, which is so much fun. You can talk about shows like this or anything that's going on. We love uh, having the patrons and we have lots of exclusive, exclusive reviews, content, other things going on over there, watch alongs. So please check that out. I would really appreciate it. And then we also have the merch store, which is a lot of fun. And thanks again to Josh. This was great. And we'll talk to y'all later. Bye, everyone.